Hello guys and welcome to this series on pre-processing resting state fMRI images. In this video we are going to see how can we segment the anatomical image or the T1 weighted image into the grey matter, white matter and CSF. Okay, so previously we have first seen how we realign the volumes and with that we can remove the motion, uh, motion I mean we correct the motion in the images. Then we do co-registration. In co-registration, we have to uh, register the anatomical image to the functional image. And if you don't know why are we doing co-registration, segmentation and so on. So I have uh, made a dedicated video on that explaining the theory behind this. If in case you have not seen that video, I highly recommend you to see that window the video by clicking here on the I button. And first, please see that video and then come back. To see how we can do segmentation okay so let's start with segmentation um, so we'll use SPM to segment the images also what I'm going to do is I'm going to use FSL uh, to display the images so FSL I'm not going to use to do any pre-processing in today's video but I'll just use it to display some images uh, because it is a nice way so I have used AFNI in my previous videos so now in these video and uh, in this video I'm going to use FSL okay. okay so let's click on segment so it opens this batch editor okay let's click on volumes Okay, so now we want to segment the anatomical image. So I'm already in the anatomical folder, and so I'll just select the anatomical image, press done. Okay. Okay, now there are some parameters over here, uh, which you can, I mean, it is better leave them uh, on default setting. If you know about them, you can change them accordingly. Okay. And now the other important thing in segmentation are these tissues. So let me just first show you what are these tissues and what is the tissue probability map that will be useful for segmentation. So let me go in FSL uh, file, add from file. So over here you can add your files. Now FSL is actually something that does not work on Windows. They have not created the FSL package for Windows. So what I do is I use this WSL Windows subsystem for Linux. Uh, by using WSL you can also use the applications that support Linux on a Windows machine. Okay so for that I'm using this. Now what happens with the WSL is they also have their own file directory. I mean you, you can see that this is very different from what uh, is there in Windows. In Windows we have the C drive, the D drive and so on. So for that what you'll have to do is you'll have to click over here and then go to mount. Okay. So when you go to the mount you can see your C and D uh, drives that is your Windows C D drive. Right. Then go to the required uh, folder that you want. Okay. <coughs> So in SPM12 folder over here below you will see something known as TPM. TPM stands for Tissue Probability Map. Okay, so this is the TPM image. Uh, let me just add a brain image as well to give you perspective. Okay, so here I have opened two images now. Okay, and the brain image is on top of TPM. So what I can do is just move this down. So now the TPM is uh, on the top on the top, top of brain image. Okay, so you can see the TPM over here and the brain image over here. Fine. So now the TPM image is on the top of the brain image, standard brain image. Now this brain image is in the MNI space 
uh, I'll talk about MNI space and standard spaces more in my normalization video. But for now, just remember this is something known as a standard space, okay? And the TPM is also in the standard space, okay? So this is the tissue probability map that we have, okay? If you see this actually is uh, for the gray matter. So wherever the gray matter is high or is more probable, over there the probability, so here you can see the value, so this is pointed. So this tells you the probability of having a gray matter. So researchers have made this TPM so that they can tell in the standard space uh, which particular voxels are more probable to be gray matter. Okay, so the zeroth volume in TPM talks about gray matter. Now if you change the volume, so over here you can change the volume like this. So this talks about the white matter. Okay, now over here the white pixels tell you that it is more probable over here to have white matter uh, cells or wh white matter tissue. Okay, so you, you can see the value 0 0.94. On the other hand, if you go over here, now this, it is less probable 0 0.1. So it is less probable for a white matter tissue to be here. Okay, so this is the tissue probability map. Okay. Then the third one is CSF. Then you have uh, the brain skull. Okay, then you have everything other than the brain skull so you also have these face kind of so this is the eye the the nose etc so other than all that thing and the last one is the background okay so these six things so here it is five because it starts from zero so these six things in reality gives you the different segmentation of the brain image okay so this is what is very important uh, for segmentation okay so that is over here so this is the tissue probability map and one says this is for gray matter okay so this is for grain gray matter uh, let me keep these uh, I mean number of Gaussians you can read what number of Gaussians to uh, over here but let me just keep the default value uh, the native tissue now as I just uh, told you there is something known as a native space so the native space is the space in which the subject lies okay now I'll tell you uh, so this uh, as I told you was the standard space this is the standard space now let me just insert the anatomical image so I'll, I'm going to this folder so this is the subject that we have been pre-processing all this while so here I am choosing the an anatomical T1 weighted uh, image okay see this image over here is the actual anatomical T1 weighted image you can see that it is not in the same space as the TPM or the standard image right you do you see that so the standard the standard image is over here so its alignment is over here but the subject is here so the alignments are a problem right so now here this space in which the subject is is called as the native space and this is something known as the standard space okay so what we want is we want the tissue to be in the native space because we have not yet gone into the standard space so we want it to be in the native space hence here I am selecting the native space okay then there is something known as warp so uh, I'll, I'll leave this to you so you can read these things and uh, over here there are options modulated unmodulated and so on so you can I mean you can, it is quite I mean, you can just read this it is quite clear but for now since we are just in the native space so we just want this tissue the native space tissue okay the second probability map is for white matter so we also want the native space segmented tissue of the white matter 
hence uh, we'll keep this in the native space and all others are none the third is for csf okay so similarly we want the native space of the csf now the fourth is something that we don't require if you remember <coughs> So the fourth is the skull. Now we don't require the skull, right? I mean, we just want the uh, non-neuronal voxels, that is the white matter and CSF, right? So we don't need the skull. Hence, for the skull, we can say <coughs> none. Okay, so we don't want the skull. Similarly, we don't want this other thing as well, the nose, eyes, whatever. And we don't want the background as well. So all of these are uh, none because we don't want what we want is the white matter the csf and in case if we need the gray matter so we'll not use gray matter as well in this video but i mean it is good to save that because you may require it in your further analysis okay. uh, then there are some other things over here uh, the only only important thing that i can see is this so here if your data has european brains then it is better to select this if you have east asian brains then you can select uh, or go for this okay so normally there are a lot of european brains so uh, let me keep this as default and then there is something known as deformation field now in future we will go from the native space that is so we are currently processing in the native space that is in this subject space in in my future videos i mean so when i start normalization i will transform this native space to the standard space okay which is this so finally all the subjects that we are uh, so in reality you would have more than one subject and you would want to analyze them so in reality you would have many subjects so all of those would be registered to the standardized space okay so that is for the other video so i'll talk about this standard space uh, in somewhat detail in that video but remember that currently we are in the native space and in the future we'll have to transform from the native space to the standard space okay so for that you will need something that is known as a deformation field okay you can read more about the deformation field over here so we are going to go into the mni space in the future so for that we will require the deformation field and forward okay so what i mean by forward is when you want to go from native space to standard space for that you need forward deformation field if in case you want to come back from the standard space to the native space for that you need require inward okay so what i would suggest is keep both inwards and forward so that you can always uh, move from the native space to the standard space and standard space back to the native space okay so i would recommend you to do this i mean for now or for this pre-processing series you would only require the forward space or the forward deformation field but uh, during analysis uh, you may require the inverse as well okay so we will go with this option okay yes that's pretty much it now let's run this might take some time so i'm going to fast forward uh, this so that things uh, so that the video is shorter Okay, so it says completed. So we are uh, done with segmentation now. Uh, so let us see the output. So there is a C1, C2, C3. So these are the segmentation uh, probabilities. Uh, I'll tell you why I'm saying probability. Uh, one is for gray matter, two is for white matter, three is for CSF. And then Y and IY either. Uh, IY is the inverse deformation field and Y is the deformation field. Okay, this we will require in the normalization uh, video or during normalization okay so for now we require these three let us see how they look like 
okay let me just uh, okay so let us start with c1 so here you can see c1 is in the native space so that is what i was saying so this is the subject's native space and let me just close all other right so this is the subject's anatomical image and this is the segmentation so you can see how nicely it has segmented the gray matter right uh, but also if you see this is not the actual segmentation but this is also probability so this is telling you with this much probability this is gray matter okay and here you will have less values or zero okay so this is still a probability map and we will have to convert this map to a binary map okay so that is what we are going to do next okay uh, so to be more sure i'll just change the color to red yellow okay so over here you can see all the perfect yellows are very close to one and these red are very close to zero so there are some these red things as well okay so now the next task is to uh, convert this uh, with having some values to a binary one zero image okay so this is gray matter however we have to see so this is the white matter you can see these these are the these are the white matter pixels okay again this is also oops i did a mistake i'll have to select over here and then uh, go there. yeah so here also you can see there are uh, this is not a binary map so this is having some values close to one and then some which are not very close to one okay so this is the white matter and then you can see the CSF as well. So let me close this. Yeah, this is my subject image, and this these things are the CSF. Oops, again, okay. I'm. Yeah, so this is the CSF right so we have got these probability maps now we want a binary image right so for that what we do is okay before that i also want to tell you something uh, so let me choose a temp equals nifty read okay so by nifty read you can actually read a volume in matlab so let me just read one of these So say C2, let me read the white matter. <clears throat> okay. Uh, yes, I so when I do this, I get the whole white matter uh, image over here as a 3D file. Okay. The data type is uint8. Now, if you see, this is in the 176, 256 cross 256 dimension. So this is our anatomical image dimension however if you remember we want to segment actually segment the functional image and the functional image is of dimension so here i will read the functional image <clears throat> let me say func and this will change to func then this R so if you yeah so it it is R R sub this thing that I have to change so R sub rest oh there is a rest yeah task rest dot in on so I get the temp form. Now, if you see the size, see that functional image is of this size 64 plus 64 plus 34. 
plus 152. However, our segmentation output or the segmented mask is in this dimension. So we also have to change this because we'll need both of them in the same dimension because we have to extract the voxels. Okay, so this is also something that we are going to do now. Okay, so let's go back to SPM. Okay, so to get a binary image and uh, to get the dimensions right, what we do is go to SPM, go to Util, you'll get image calculator. So now you don't need the segmentation module, so you can delete this module. You need the image calculator and it asks for input image. So you can, so over here what you need to do is first you need to put the functional image okay then you need to put the so here first I am putting the white matter so this will create the white matter mask for you so C2 is the white matter just please remember to put first the functional image and then the white matter mask or the probability map okay so because what SPM does is it reshapes or reslices the output segmentation of the output mask that binary mask that we are going to get in dimensions of the first image okay so when you put r sub first l uh, the output image will be with the these dimensions 64 64 34 which we want okay press done then it asks you what should be the file name okay so you can just type say white matter uh, mask uh, 99 I'll tell you why 99 <clears throat> then it asks for an I output directory so I like to keep it uh, over here in the anatomical folder then it asks for an expression so the expression says what do you want to do with the image okay so what so there are different options so you can either sum all the I mean take the mean of the image like this so now we just have two images so we just have i1 and i2 so what I want to do is i2 is my mask right i2 in if you remember over here i2 is this ma uh, probability map that I have got so what I want is I want <coughs> all the values that have i2 greater than 0 0.99 0 0.99 so 0 0.99 tells you the so this is the probability value so i want all the voxels that had probability greater than 0 0.99 okay so this is where i am creating a binary image anything greater than 0 0.99 is 1 anything less than 0 0.99 is 0 okay and why i2 because my second image was the mask okay if you see over here the second image is the mask <clears throat> and that is important i mean i cannot keep the first image because then the dimension would change okay uh, all other things are fine i mean you can just explore what are these other things as well but for now these are fine and what i'll do is i will also do the same thing <clears throat> for CSF as well so input image so first you have to put the functional image uh, R stuff then take the C3 is for CSF output file name let me put the output as CSF mask 99 okay output directory let me put this in the anat folder as well expression expression again will be the same i2 greater than 0 0.99 okay and the rest all is okay so now when i do this both of these will get executed so let me just run that okay here you can see the warning the warning says the image do not have same dimensions as we saw the anatomical and the functional had different dimensions hence what it does is it uses the first image okay now if you go to the anat folder 
here you can see the CSF mask as well as the white matter mask okay now if I just quickly load the mask so it is in the anad folder the white matter and let me name this as temporary white matter cool so here you can see it is in the same dimension as that we want with the uh, functional image so 64 64 34 and the functional image is also 64 64 cross 34 okay so this was very important and the other thing if you see now <coughs> the mask so now it is a beautiful binary mask uh, let me just remove all of this yeah so this is a beautiful binary mask now I have only selected those pixels which were which were so which the probability mask was for which the probability mask was 0 0.299 or more okay so it is very important to be very precise that these are white matter uh, white matter voxels because if there is if any gray matter or something uh, gray matter voxel or a neuronal signal comes in this mask then it will be a big problem because we are going to regress them out right in the next video so hence it is very important that you uh, choose a threshold which is uh, at least 0.99 and so here we have the white matter mask and similarly we will have the CSF mask over here. yeah this is the CSF mask you can see it is only uh, on the CSF okay this is the CSF so these two are the most important segmentations output that we uh, required and this was what the actual video was so we got the two masks WM mask and the CSF mask uh, and in the next video we will see how using these masks how can we actually extract the mean CSF and WM that is white matter mask uh, white matter time series uh, for regression okay so the next video will be a short one which will just tell you uh, this small code that will extract the CSF and white matter time series okay so that's all for this video thank you so much for watching